Thank you for watching The Forum. I'm your host, Ashley Tate, here with my co-host, Christy Largent, and our guest today, Jenny Hansen, and she is the CEO and co-founder of Wild Card Brewing. Brewery or brewing? Brewing company. Brewing company, and you have this amazing award this year of Startup of the Year. Yes. For the SBA of the Sacramento District. Yes. Which includes 21 counties. It does, yeah. So, so it's, it's a nice big chunk of California. Yeah. And we stuck out, apparently, to the folks at the SBA. And one Startup of the Year was really exciting. Yeah, that is exciting. That's a and huge and award. It and, is. and thinking of Startup of the Year, tell us a little bit about your business yeah. and how'd you get started and how'd you end up in Reading yeah. and all that. All, all those good, good things. Yeah, <laughs> all that stuff. Um, well, we, let's see, we started our business in November of 2012. So we're almost 18 months old now. Okay. Um, um, it's just been rapid pace. Just we have hit the ground running, and this area has really embraced us and uh, been so so good to us. And so we've just been trying to keep up with the demand and provide for this <laughs> wonderful community that we is desperate here. for craft beer. <laughs> so yeah, it's it's been really exciting. Um, my husband and I both went to school at Cal Poly in San Luis Obispo. That's where mm -hmm. we had met. He grew up in this area, okay. and um, we were both following separate career paths and. Um, just we're getting more and more interested in making our own beer at home and of course he took that to the next level <laughs> and um, started volunteering his time at the local brewery where we were living at the time mm -hmm. and that brewer there informed him of this brewing school in the UK and he came home and told me about it I was like yeah 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 you know that sounds yeah, good yeah, yeah, <laughs> whatever yeah, yeah. Um, and two weeks later he was um, came home from work and said, hey, you know, I put in my notice. I've been accepted into this school that oh. I applied to. Oh. Oh Let's do it. What do you think? Oh. And I, <laughs> my head was just spinning. How old were you guys at the time? Um, in our 20s. Okay, yeah. so no kids yet. Or no, okay. no. Okay. And okay. that was what made it perfect okay. is yeah. that we were renting a little house. Mm -hmm. We didn't have kids. We had really nothing tying us down right. except yeah. for the poor dog who went off to the in-laws for a couple months. Yeah. But it was a really good time in our lives to try something different and so we threw everything in the air and moved to the UK and that's where he earned his degree in brewing science and technology wow. and wow. really set us on that path. Um, that was maybe five or six years ago I guess yeah. now and um, he was following a career as a professional brewer and I was trying to piece together a business concept and a yeah, plan and yeah. decide where would this be housed because this was really the goal all along yeah. was to do our own thing and um, and I just want to say really quick up. so Jenny you have a degree in agricultural business is I that do correct? yes okay so I mean there is kind of a good fit there yes right? definitely yeah for you too and, and just so that you all know I mean it wasn't out it, of the blue yeah exactly. no yeah. it wasn't like so you had it's been a long time you, in the making how long yeah. were you in the UK then how long we were was just it was an intensive program we were just there for about four months oh. and Jeff was really the one going through all the schooling and all the brewing yeah. and all the chemistry and I really just got to enjoy the, my surroundings. <laughs> yeah. was awesome. Where were you in England? Uh, we were in really northern England in a town called Sunderland. Um, it's near Newcastle, so okay. pretty remote, honestly. Um, but it was really great to just immerse ourselves in that culture yeah, and yeah. experience it. Yeah. yeah. I so love how her website, the website to Wild Card Brewing Co. Yeah. says, Jenny did all the research yes. at the local pubs. <laughs> <laughs> that was my official hey, position. Research. <laughs> I think I'm going to do some research tonight, yeah. honey. <laughs> so what about you back to plenty. Reading? After, after England, then did you guys decide, how, how did you decide that we're going to come Well, to Jeff was brewing up in central Washington, oh. and um, we at the time were putting together a business plan and okay. trying to determine where this would be. Yeah. And we knew that we really wanted to be back in California. Um, we wanted to start a family, and this is where our families are yeah. at. And yeah. so that was important to us, but Reading just kept calling itself out. I mean, it, on a map, it's this huge, vast area with no craft brewery aside right. from our, you know, that guy down in Chico, Sierra <laughs> Nevada, <laughs> but um, <laughs> that little tiny <laughs> thing, not a big yeah. deal. Um, <laughs> yeah. But other than that, this area was really untouched, and it kept coming up in discussion, and we just couldn't ignore it. Right. Um, and so we moved up here in June of 2012, and started looking for a space to house our business and started putting feelers out there as par far as funding and 
and really starting to piece everything together. Yeah. And we're so happy we did because it's really, it's been the perfect place for us. It's just a beautiful community and beautiful surroundings. Yeah. And this community has really just taken us in and Aww. we're we're happy about so that. So where are you, you're located off of Highway 44 mm -hmm. and I see the and sign crossroads. all the time. Yes. Crossroads, which is off of Old Oregon Trail. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Like on the way to the soccer park. Right I see there. your sign right there. Yep. <laughs> yes, it's so right there right in that there, business complex. And, and that's where the brewery is? Yeah, so okay. that's where our production is. Um, we have a 15 barrel brew house out there and then wow. we have a small tasting room up front so you could come and have a sampler flight or a pint and oh, wow. um, we're selling bottles now which is really exciting. We just got into that market. So, so before you were just doing, when people would come to you, mm -hmm. you would sell them beer. Yes. And that's the only purview you had. For we were, um, well, it's a lot of beer, so we were <laughs> actually, yeah, I gotta find a house for all this beer. Yeah. Uh, so we were selling locally in Reading to bars and restaurants. Oh, okay. We're carried in about 40 different accounts right now, actually, wow. which is awesome. Yeah. And then we partnered with Foothill Distributing, and they are carrying our beers off into uh, Tehama, Butte, Siskiyou, Trinity, wow. and parts of Shasta in County. Bo in bottles. In bottles and in so you kegs. buy it in the refrigerator, at yes. the, at the at the, at the grocery store. store. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. And exactly. then also really exciting is we just partnered with another distributor on the coast. So now Humboldt and Del Norte counties oh, will also we're be expanding. Nice. Nice. So, so yeah, you take a trip out. in the <laughs> summertime, <laughs> you can still get your wild card over there. Yeah. yeah. So the neat thing at your uh, brewery is with this front tasting room, mm -hmm. you do, I read you're doing events there. We do, so. yeah. We try to um, keep it fresh and, yeah. you know, try to mix it up and do different things out there. Um, one of the things that we really try to do is get involved in our community and give back as much as we can. Mm -hmm. So um, we're tonight, we're, uh, that won't make sense. <laughs> Back in April. Back in April, sorry. Um, we do fundraisers for community efforts. Yeah. So Shasta County Land Trust, they're a really great organization yeah. and they're out there trying to keep parts of our environment whole yeah. and not Protect developed. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So with going into the bottle, we really wanted to celebrate this beautiful area that surrounds us oh, and okay. give back to them in that effort. Um, we've also done some fundraising for a young boy, Taylor Andrews, who was diagnosed with some very serious oh, cancer wow. and we're trying to raise money for his family to mm -hmm. kind of get through that difficult time, which they're still going through. Um, and mm -hmm. Shane's Way is another great foundation. A, they yeah. give back mm -hmm. um, in a big way yeah. to young adults who are trying to have that experience or make that wish come true kind yeah. of mm -hmm. in a difficult time. So we, we try to find things that speak to us and get involved. That's great. Now tell us a little bit about your craft beer. Mm -hmm. Let's kind of get into the, what okay. that's all about. I have no idea about anything about craft beer, so explain it for me and hopefully some other viewers that Definitely. So um, craft beer is a growing, growing industry. Um, it actually only makes up about 6% of all total beer sales. So it's still oh, a very wow. small wow. industry, but we're seeing more and more and more of it um, because... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's a good thing. Sky's the limit. That's right. Um, but it's a really specialty niche area where it allows you to meet the brewer, see where your beer is made, get some specialty things things that you don't see yeah. everywhere else. It's, it's generally craft is a term that's reserved for people that are doing a smaller production. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so would a craft beer also be, I mean, I, I, I guess it is because you've made this, <laughs> but would an example of that be chocolate beer? Yes. <laughs> Shot in the Dark. It's a really <laughs> popular beer that we do, and it is very specialty. Um, it's got a lot of chocolate and a lot of coffee components to it. It's Ooh, yeah, whoa. it's really really smooth. We use oats in that beer, so it gives it a real smooth, creamy texture. Yeah. And then my husband uses a special malt that's been dehusked, so it actually takes the stringency out of it and makes it that much sweeter. Really? Yeah, it's I'm really gonna try that. Tasty. <laughs> I'm gonna try that. Yes. Uh, yeah, we did a, a float yeah. with it uh, one Sunday. Some ice no way. Cream. Oh yeah, vanilla oh ice cream. <laughs> in that year set. Did it's it so really? delicious. It's really good. So try a different root beer yes. float. Yes. Yes. Do not change give it that. to your children. Yeah, no, that's not going to be good. <laughs> do not give it to your kids. But you do serve other things. I mean, do you, do you, I, I know this is a question that maybe I shouldn't ask, but do you allow children to come in? We do. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So they could get a root beer float and it's mommy could get a. absolutely family a friendly. In there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. We do float. sell some root beer and some Coke. A shot in the dark float. Yes. Okay. yes. Very, yeah, yeah. we'll so have two versions. As an yeah. entrepreneur in Reading, we get a lot of different business 
voices that we've yeah. people that we've interviewed over the years mm -hmm. with the show and what has been a high point for you, your entrepreneurial high point yeah. of doing business here in Reading? Um, it was really an experience to walk into Kent's and see our bottle on the shelf, uh -oh. you know, and see that they're, and not even announcing who we are, but that their um, salespeople were telling someone in line about it. Oh. And that was just like, kind of had me standing there like, really? <laughs> it, <gives me> yeah. <laughs> it was oh. very cool. Yeah. yeah, and there's been a lot of points like that along along the way. Uh -huh. yeah. mm -hmm. And it's awesome that you and your husband can do this together. Yes. I mean, sometimes. Probably most of the Most time. times it's I mean, very it's cool. It's a fun, it sounds yeah. like a fun business. Yeah. Where so, do you get your raw materials? A lot of our materials, um, beer is made mostly, well, only of water, yeast, malt, and hops. So it's a very simplistic yeah. uh Product. drink yeah. but it can depending on what you pull of those you can make all sorts of different styles and our um, suicide jackets a cream ale and we use hops out of Lake County actually it's a oh. small organic family farm called oh. Hopmeister and we purchase our hops from them That's on that neat. beer and, and then how does it get up to Reading by truck well <laughs> last time we actually went um, down to the farm <laughs> and watched them harvest all of the oh, hops and um, picked it up that way but that would yeah otherwise be a really awesome video yeah I was thinking yeah, it's on our Facebook it? page you oh can check that God. video out yeah so that's on our the Facebook best page. ways to get a hold of you I had to cut off on all the ways you get your raw materials yeah. Sorry. That's okay, there's a lot of them. <laughs> what, um, what's the best way for people to find out more about you? Probably our Facebook page or our website, which is just wildcardbrewingco.com. Okay, and yeah. the Facebook page is under? Wildcard Brewing Co. Mm -hmm. Okay, hey. yeah. Yeah. so you can like you on yes. Facebook and See then what come we're up over to. and taste. Yep. And when, is, when are you open? I saw you have a couple big events. You've got the Friday fun night. Right? Yes, and we have food truck Friday, food food truck. foodie Friday. So Ooh, yeah, like we have different that. food trucks out there every Friday night and some really good ones in town that yes. provide some very good And I think that dishes. would be fun to come with the kids. Yes. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, that they love it. And then Sundays are your fun days. Yeah, so we yeah. bring out, again, board games. Yeah. <laughs> and so it's a, it's a fun that. thing, you know, kind of unplug and yeah. disconnect and just yeah. have a good time. Well, it's so neat to know about yeah. you. And this is, I know we get a lot of feedback that our viewers love hearing details about local businesses yeah. and thank you for coming thank you on for having us we yeah really this is fun i really appreciate it it's as well. fun thanks for watching we're going to be back in just a few minutes with the second half of our show you will not want to miss it <laughs>
One of the traditions in our order is that, you know, that we make our living by the work of our own hands yes. so that we don't live on donations. And um, so to support ourselves, we have a farm mm -hmm. and um, part of our farm is our vineyard. Okay. And so in the year 2005, we, we opened a, a tasting room and we, we make our own wine. Um, the monks are very involved with the, the making of the wine and we've been very grateful we've been uh, received um, some awards and in international competitions wow. for our for our wine. Well, I just find it interesting when you're saying we, we do our prayer seven times a day mm -hmm. and then we do our work. Mm -hmm. So your work has to do with creating this wine, is that correct? Well, that yeah, our, our, our farm, so we have um, uh, the vineyard and we also have about um, 200 or so acres of uh, plume, prune plum and walnut orchards. Wow, how so many acres? I would say we're probably farming about 200 acres wow. of those also. Wow, so and that's all of them doing sold? That? Where, where do you yeah. sell all that product? Um, we are part of the Sun Sweet Co-op for our, for our prunes. Oh my gosh. So very, very famous company. We've probably uh, eaten your prunes. You, you, could have had, <laughs> you, you could have had some snuck into your uh, Sun Sweet bag. <laughs> Oh, that's neat. Yeah. So prunes and walnuts. That's right. And wine. Good, healthy products in moderation. In moderation. <laughs> that's right. Oh. That's true. All of that in moderation. Yes. That's true. So the winery started in 05, so less than 10 years ago, and you've mm -hmm. already earned uh, many awards. Yeah. That's right. And for visitors who want to come see what the Abbey is all about, what, what kind of things are, are there? I mean, that's your work and your life, yeah. and so here come barge in the visitors, right? I know. So what, how does that work? Well, we... I, I could say that for the monks we have a, a cloister, we have an enclosure, you know, that, oh, that, really? that, that's for the, for the monks only, but we also have a guest area of our monastery and there we have a, a tasting room that is o open every day 11 to 5 oh, wow. and visitors are welcome to come and, and try some of our wine and then also um, they're welcome to join us for prayer in the, in the Abbey Church if yeah. they would like yeah. and um, we also, um, as you mentioned, have a really exciting project. We are actually rebuilding on the property, reconstructing a um, medieval building from our order from from uh, Spain that oh dates gosh. to actually the um, 11th, uh, the 12th century. Wow! So it Goodness. is it is going back up, back up, and when it's finished. Uh, we feel called to use it as our our new monastery church. So it'll be a wonderful place for for chanting for sure. our prayers. And and do you so do you allow people to come through and and um, view your monastery? Yeah, we we welcome visitors. Really. Mm -hmm. um, and so you know, if anyone is would like to visit us, uh, hospitality is is an important part of uh, welcoming oh, people is a very important yeah. part of our, our mission. And oh, you also amazing. do retreats. I'm going to come back to that yeah. building in a minute, but you also do retreats since you're yeah. talking about hospitality. And I noticed on your website that there's a number of different retreat options. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Mm -hmm. Well, we, um, we have silent retreats for people, um, you know, self-directed yeah. retreats, and usually they're um, weekend or weekday, so like Friday afternoon until uh, Sunday afternoon or Monday morning and then Monday afternoon to uh, till Friday. What does that entail? We usually people uh, we have uh, we provide a meal and you know a simple room mm -hmm. and just let people um, enjoy the, the the prayerful atmosphere and the tranquility and the quiet of the monastery and you know let it be a time for them to um, unwind kind of and yeah and disconnect. Be focused. Yeah and uh, from from the connected world. <laughs> <laughs> it's a more, really it's a more quiet, it's a more quiet world. But yes, yes. It's a place for the Lord to speak to them. And oh wow! And Ashley, it would be really hard for us because you I don't know. talk. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. I was thinking I, I, I won't yeah. be able to do that. Yeah. But I do think it's very interesting. Mm -hmm. Can you do it for just a short period, like 15 minutes? <laughs> yeah. We, we also welcome day visitors, so if somebody just wants to come up for a few hours, that's fine. Okay, that's okay. We won't, we won't no judgment, right? Start, you're going to okay. start with the little baby steps, <laughs> that's Ashley. Right. No baby judgment, steps. no on that. <laughs> so the, um, the building is called Sacred Stones, right? Mm -hmm. You're creating a chapter house, yep. yes. and it has such a fascinating history going obviously back to the 1100s, mm -hmm. 12th century, yeah. but then a certain man named William Randolph Hearst heard about <laughs> this, and yeah. tell how what, he, how what the story is with that. Well, 
you know that um, Mr. Hearst was famous for his eclectic building product. Yes. You know, yes. He, the, his Hearst Castle in Southern California, he was actually looking to do something similar in Northern California. Okay. So he had people in Europe looking for uh, architectural treasures, mm -hmm. and he happened to, to come upo upon a, um, a monastery of our order that um, was, de was defunct. You know, the, the yeah, monks weren't right, there right. anymore. So he had uh, part of this monastery dismantled and shipped all the way uh, to San Francisco. Oh my God! Yes, that. it was a huge operation, and when he when he they got to San Francisco, you know the Great Depression had hit, and they re he just put the project on hold, and he was just never able to complete it. So he donated the stones to the, to the city of San Francisco, oh with the God. understanding that they would put it up in Golden Gate Park as a museum, but they weren't able to do it either. So in the early 90s, we, um, we had our eyes on them because it was yeah. from yeah. our order. And so we sure. said, you know, why don't you let us give it a try? And uh, we have now come a long way. Um, all the medieval stones are in place, the vaulted ceiling and the yeah. Gothic portals. And wow. it's very I beautiful. Wow, you tell it's building. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Well, I, hopefully we can get some pictures to Absolutely. run as we're talking to you so that mm -hmm. our viewers can see yeah, what that looks like because mm -hmm. it's just stunning. It's breathtaking, yeah. Yeah. really. And if, and if we don't, where can they see a picture? Well, uh, we, we do have a website, yes. uh, www newclairvaux.org, New which is okay. kind of difficult to spell. It's a French pronunciation, mm -hmm. so you might have to look for it a little bit. Yeah. But <laughs> it comes right up, C-L-A-I-R-V-A-U-X, if That's you're wondering, right. C-L-A-I-R-V-A-U-X, yeah. New Clairvaux, mm -hmm. and it's a beautiful website, I have to say. It's very comprehensive with lots of pictures, and, mm -hmm. and I love the idea that you guys are reaching out. You're, many times when you think of being a monk, you think of being internally focused right. and excluding the outside world and to me you guys seem like a little oasis that draws people yeah you know in a sense you're drawing people to God right because you're right. drawing them to the peace right. that comes from him yeah. and mm -hmm. so whether you just need a couple hours off in the afternoon or if you have can take a couple right. days or I noticed you even had a program that was more long term which like at least two weeks and you it's application process mm -hmm. to wow. be accepted and uh, for men only, because you're a men only um, mm -hmm. monastery, monastery mm -hmm. right? But I but would like to know, how do you become a monk? Yeah. How can you become a monk if you were interested? Well, Just I'm glad you asked about that, well, because I'm, I'm also the vocation director oh, at our monastery. Okay. You know, the one who, is, who helps people who are interested in joining us. Really? Um, so actually, um, they can contact me, and usually what we do is we set up like an initial, initial visit for them to get a sense of who we are and what we do and yeah. have a little experience of our life. Yeah. And um, it's a very long discernment process. Right. Because, you know, with... Um, it should be. It's a major yeah. commitment. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 Yeah. yeah. So what are the, some of the tenets that you, that you do live by? I know that most of your day is built around prayer. Mm -hmm. And I know that you guys make your own money, essentially, from anything that you've done with your hands, mm -hmm. right? And so what would be some of the other tenets? Hospitality. That's right. And, and keep going. Well, our, our core values are, as you mentioned, hospitality, mm -hmm. uh, manual labor, um, prayer, yeah. simplicity. So only, you know, what's necessary, right. not a lot of luxuries or superfluity. And, um, and um, separation from the world in the sense that we have a kind of a, like I said, a cloister where we have a little space of our own to, yeah. you know, kind of a space that we need for to be able to grow in prayer and, and closeness right. to the Lord Jesus. Yeah. Wow. I love that. I can't believe this is so close and right one of our jewels here in Northern California yeah. really. It's, it's I've, read, I've read about it many times and now I'm going to make the effort to come out and bring Absolutely. my family. Yeah. Let my children see what you have going on yeah. out there. It's very it's just uh, Vina if you don't know is just east of Red Bluff. Yeah. Right? Between that's, that's Red Bluff right. and Chico. Yeah, about halfway between those two yeah, cities. Yeah, so, and you'll get to see some of our beautiful nature in God's mm -hmm. beautiful nature right there. Yeah, and Brother so. Christopher did say that we are allowed to bring our kids. Mm -hmm. So you can it's take family your kids. Family-friendly event. Exactly, yeah. to mm -hmm. the winery. So if you don't want to go for uh, a three-hour, a <laughs> three-and-a-half-hour <laughs> trip to Sonoma mm -hmm. and you want to get some great wine, And I think it's pretty neat. I'm sure KIXC will be auctioning this off. Thank you <laughs> yeah. for bringing it, Brother Christopher. You're welcome. And what a great show we've had today. Wow. Really a wonderful time. Thanks for watching. We'll look forward to seeing you again next week.